Hi friends. At this point of filming, I'm not quite sure what the title will be. I think I'll make it about current summer skin faves. It's now May, not officially summertime, but the recent complexion and cheek products that have entered my life have been top of the line, top notch, okay? I also wanted to present a few updates in terms of me buying Danessa's Yummy Skin Blurring Balm in shade seven, also purchasing the vegan kombucha tea essence by Dr. Sarah sorry, Sarah Clay, Sarah Cole, Sarah Cole, like Miracle, maybe? Per the suggestion of RC, that is the name of their avatar under my Pat McGrath Labs Divine Skin Rose Essence video. They had commented several times suggesting the vegan kombucha in that it is the same by face technology. You can't see it because I did shake it and it takes a while for it to separate, but this is essentially what the Pat McGrath is. So I wanted to apply the kombucha essence here on camera and kind of give you a different alternative, right? I think it's fine to love the Pat McGrath, but not buy it because it does have fragrance. Maybe we can get the same experience from that essence. To give you also swatches of now five, six, and seven of the Blurring Balm and also apply the Sweet Water Dew Wet Balm. This is another new product from Danessa. I purchased this and the Blurring Balm from Danessa's site because at the moment the Dew Wet Balm in Sweet Water is currently available only on Danessa's site eventually will be on Sephora. When I tuned into their Teach Me Tuesday, I think last week, she had said the 21st for Sephora. I'm not quite sure. I'm sorry if I'm lying. And yeah, I think that's it. So why don't you come in a little closer? <gasps> that's enough. I thought we will start off by applying the kombucha essence. This does not have any fragrance, but it relies on that same by face technology. And, and let me see here. I also have the box calling out the first five ingredients. My goodness, if I could find it. Hello? Aqua, try. Nope. It has the camellia leaf extract. Also has a uh, is that sunflower seed oil? I don't think this one has almond seed oil, which is higher on the list for Pat's essence. And some of you had said that another reason why you cannot use that essence because you are allergic to almonds. Let's give this a pour. It looks exactly the same. It has like that milky texture. No fragrance. Goes on similarly. Now feeling out if it has that similar like slick Yes, it does. So when you apply it, it has that same emolliency and silky texture where when it starts to absorb, you can still slide your fingers across the skin without over manipulating the skin, right? A great step before serum and before moisturizer, after toner, after cleansing and washing. Really nice tack and again, no fragrance, so if you wanted the same type of texture and sensorial experience that you would get from Pat's Divine Skin, you can definitely get it from uh, Dr. Siracle, if you like. Vegan Kombucha Tea Essence, okay? Let's get into the Blurring Balm, okay? I have five, six, and seven. Let me quickly read off seven's undertone description because I know five is golden, six is neutral, seven is tan dark skin with neutral undertones, and five is medium tan with golden. So this is five, six tan skin with neutral undertones, and now seven is tan dark skin with neutral undertones. So these are my current three blurring balm shades. These I can go either way. Number six, because originally I had said five was like my dead on match. Six could be a match as well. It gives me a little more warmth. Originally I had purchased six to be my bronzer, but when looking at the footage and applying it over five, six over five, it didn't have a strong enough bronzing effect that I had wanted. So that's why I bought seven. I should have just purchased seven. Now I have uh, three blurring bombs. It's fine, it's fine. You know what, let me do the 
jaw to neck. So this is five, this is six, this is seven. So you can see the more neutral undertone from six. However, when I apply six all over my skin, it's not detectable. It's not overwhelmingly neutral, and I think it's because of the light coverage from the product. Whereas just from these three, I think we can agree. Hey, rhymes. That five is probably my best match. And, you know, I, I use both interchangeably. So if you want to take a look, let me light this off. And what I can do is apply five on one side and six on the other. Let's take five on this side and you can see that more golden undertone from five. You know, I wore six all over today and I really couldn't tell a significant difference. However, if you do follow my shade matches and if you are my skin tone more or less, I think five is a great way to go. The great thing about this product is, again, because of its light coverage, it stretches across several skin tones at once. And the skin matching, therefore, a lot more forgiving overall than a medium coverage product uh, shade matching would be. So this is five. I've been using the Blurring Balm for over a week and it's been phenomenal, mostly because of ease of application. There's nothing to press out, there's nothing to mix, There's, it just goes on so effortlessly. And as I had mentioned in my original Blurring Balm video, if you wanna take a look at that, it'll be up in the card or down below in the description box, that you can use this on its own for your skin but better moment or apply it as a primer for more coverage. Let's go in with number six, tapping that on this side of my face. And maybe you can pick up more of a neutral undertone here. But again, you can see that they they they're both wonderful they they both work i do think six gives me a little more warmth but it doesn't appear dull i definitely like the neutral undertone from the nessa's uh complexion line because it doesn't dull my complexion it you know honors i think more of an olive undertone that one of you had said that i might have because they run similarly to me and I'm not exactly neutral, maybe more olive, but I think number six has a little bit of that olive-ish neutral tone that when applied does very well for me, yeah? So here is number five, more golden, maybe my shade match at my lightest, but the golden undertone doesn't make me look yellow and sad. Whereas number six, giving us a little more warmth but even with neutral undertone, doesn't dull my complexion and just gives me more of a toasty look, which we love. Now applying the Say Hydra Beam Concealer. This is in number five. One of you had said that number four works great and I'm, I'm contemplating only because I have MG5 from LYS. And let me clarify this, uh, statement I made in my Divine Skin video. Yes, I threw away my Pat McGrath concealer because it, I, it was over a year. It was over a year. It had nothing to do with me not liking it anymore. Its shelf life had expired. In fact, I was using it beyond its shelf life. And I wouldn't recommend that you use makeup, old makeup, even if it doesn't smell bad. I think what starts to change is the texture. And the Pat McGrath concealer, amazing. Full coverage while still looking natural it could be a little drier after it's had its year run and I think that's what was happening to me and I wanted to switch it up I wanted to switch concealers and that's when I bought the LYS and now I have the say which looks very golden but when applied especially with either five or six from the blurring balm works out just fine. Let's take a look at seven now as a bronzer color. And I think number seven, definitely the way to go if you're my skin tone and you wanted a little bit of warmth. And again, although this is a neutral undertone, it has such a beautiful color to it. And what I appreciate about the Blurring Balm is the texture just wraps around your skin in a way that looks so seamless and beautiful. And many of you had said 
that when wearing the blurring skin and you were in ultra hot, humid conditions and it stayed, had your skin looking fresh, ready, okay? Oh yeah, that's gorgeous. It has a little more color than the Say, I believe. I'm a big fan of Say's Natural Cream Bronzer. Why don't I pop that? shade comparison here on the swatches. So this is the Say. I think the Say might have a little more red, whereas Danessa's Blurring Balm in Seven, a little more yellow. And I'm partial to that color. I think that's a unique take on a bronzer color. Same way I feel about Benefit. When have I mentioned that in a while, except for their brow pencils. Benefit's Hula. I think it was the Hula Medium that had like a yellowish tint to it. Mented Cosmetics also has a bronzer. I don't think it was Yacht. It was the other one. Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. Maybe it was Beach Bum. This is a powder product, but you see that like yellowish tone I think is very unique. And what exists, I feel, in Danessa's Blurring Bomb a little bit, a little bit. So there you have it. We have all the blurring bombs on my face. Again, I don't think you can detect a distinct difference between six and five. You might now because the way I applied it and we, we saw the close-ups, but either will work. I do think five, probably my winter shade, and six is going to be now and going forward shade, you know at least until September, early October. Let's get into the Dew Wet Balm. Now compared to, let's say, Final Surgeon Spectral Shine, these are on the opposite sides of the spectrum in terms of finish and intention. I think the Final Surgeon Spectral Shine is best for oily skin, even normal, because it's more of a soft focus effect and a dry cream, which if you are oily already, you still want highlight for it to have more of a blurring effect and also to take away excess shine from your cheekbone area, still have that glow, definitely. Whereas Danessa's is, you can see it's more emollient. It definitely has more tack. It's a beautiful shade, but I don't think it will be for everyone. And to give context, right, when Danessa does her makeup, she has a lot of light on her models and Primarily, that shiny, like glistening effect, I think is optimal for taking the photograph right then and there. Don't know about its longevity, right? So if you are in a humid climate, I don't know how comfortable you will feel having something like the Duet Balm on your skin, because if I were to swatch Spectral Shine right next to it, and by the way, this is in the shade Dew of Dawn, this is a lot drier, yeah, it's a totally different formula from the get. So let me apply Dew Wet and I will with a finger. I think that's the easiest way to go, but you can just see the texture from the Dew Wet Balm. It's just, it has a little bit of like, zhuzh. And because it has some color to it, it has like a coral peachy hue, I like to apply this lower on the cheeks and then you can tap any excess up on the cheekbones and look at look at that look at that shine now again this might not be for everyone it has more tack than spectral shine then also final surgeons uh skin spark blush blush creams that's not the name of it but it's escaping me i'm sorry also more than rare beauties liquid blushes more than Tower 28, I would say. Tower 28, although a little tacky, doesn't have as much of that wet look to it. Let's apply it on the other side. Well, do you wanna see Spectral Shine on this side? Okay, I'm applying more Duet actually. This is a beautiful color. I love the hue it has, cause dead on, you can see more of that color when I turn, bam, there it is. Whereas Spectral Shine, it's going to be a little more conservative with the glow, right? It's a different texture, different product expectation altogether, right? So you can still see that glow and shine, but it doesn't have that same 
glossy effect as Duet does. So this is again Final Surgeon's Spectral Shine in Dew of Dawn and here is Danessa's Duet Balm in Sweet Water. Now to apply Sweet Water on this side, I mean ultimately I think I will just apply both. I would apply Singe or Inferno on top of my cheeks. If you have long hair that loves to flow and fly in the wind, you might get a couple of strands stuck on your cheeks, I'm just saying. Rarely do I wear my hair down, but when I do, it rarely goes down, it goes more out. That's just because of my texture. So even then, I wouldn't experience any hair stuck problems, but you you might get a little stuckity, okay? I'm just, I'm just letting you know. What else did I want to share? I think that's it. I love how the kombucha essence looks under the blurring balm. Again, it feels the same as Divine Skin. Maybe Divine Skin has a little more oil in it. I think it has a lot more oil in it since Sweet Almond Oil, I forgot, was second or third on the list, whereas the kombucha essence... I don't see any oil in here. Well, that's not true. Some of these ingredients, like the hydrogenated poly C614 olefin, that might be an oil. I just, I'm unable to identify it because I have no idea. And sunflower seed oil, but that's way lower on the list. It also has some botanical extract, centella asiatica, which has been known to be great for calming and soothing the skin. Uh, cacao seed extract, sodium hyaluronate, uh, great humectant. So yeah, it's, it's a different formula. And sometimes you can't tell just from seeing the ingredients alone. It's all about how they are formulated that determines the efficacy of the product. But again, this costs $35 and Pat's Essence is 86. I think Pat's Essence is expensive, not only because of who she hired to formulate the product, but she probably hired a nose to create a, a signature fragrance for her and her skincare line. I think that's part of the reason why it is so expensive, but $35, I guess you can still, probably mid-tier in terms of pricing, but a great deal if you wanted a biphase essence to give you a little more emolliency and silkiness to your skin texture for your complexion products that will not make you sneeze or flare up your eczema, psoriasis, dermatitis, whatever skin conditions that are easily irritated by fragrance. I think that's it. Look how shiny my cheeks are. Sweet water is really pretty. I don't know how often I would use it again, just because it's a little more tacky than how I would like to have my cheeks for over a long period of the day, but maybe brief moments like those photo op moments, I could slap it on. What if we had applied, oh, I don't know, like the Suku, Suku's Global Summer Collection. I did order the rest. I was not able to order that moisture lipstick shade, unfortunately. And when I was up at like 3 a.m., okay? I was not able to check out a Selfridges. It was impossible. I don't know what was going on on that website. And Liberty London did not yet upload the moisture lipstick. They uploaded everything else. Regardless, I managed to pick up the other Fluid Fog lipstick, the Signature Quad in 116, and the beige color melting blush powder. It looked cool on the photographs, but I think it's going to look very different. So that's why I decided to uh, pick one of those up. I'm trying to find the melting, here it is, here it is. This melting powder highlighter, exceptional. I just want to see how it will look if I were to apply it on top of the Duet Balm. I'm taking a synthetic brush because this is so... <laughs> this is not fair. This is so pretty. It still has the tack, but the melting highlighter texture took away a little bit. But look at that. Now let's go in with number 101, Holterio. This just tangerine hot okay 
Some of you had mentioned Taj Mahal from NARS. I unfortunately don't have that blush. I remember Taj Mahal to be very vibrant, however. I feel this is a little more muted. I could be wrong. But the way it just combined with the Duet Balm, it swam right in and created another color. It still has that shine left behind, but good to know that if I wanted to apply a powder-like product, the Melting Powder Blush formula, or rather just Melting Powder formula, is so unique. When Suku released this, in January and I tried it for the first time. Floored, floored by just the experience of it, the texture, ease of use, how I ran out of words, I don't know what else to say, except that right now I'm feeling my complexion and cheek routine. You know what, let's apply some moisture lipstick, hold on. One, two, three. Eh. Between what's on my cheeks and now with what's going on the lip, this is very, I feel like so summery. It's kind of off because I'm wearing pastels. Hold on, let's put on these sun earrings from Eastly. Okay, I that's, that's fun. And there you have it, taking a look at shade number seven from Danessa's Yummy Skin Blurring Balm, as well as testing out the vegan kombucha tea essence, Sci Phase Essence, as well as playing with the Dew Wet Balm in Sweet Water. Another look at the Suku Summer Collection. Again, reiterating the fact that May so far has been fantastic for my complexion and cheek products. I know we're only halfway in, but right now it's, I look forward to applying my makeup, especially the blurring balm. I just can't get enough of is accessibility and how easy it is to apply. The color science is fantastic. I can get away with five or six. Either works. Happy that I bought seven because it does add that bronze effect without looking too, too too bronzy and again the texture is just perfect that you know it doesn't look artificial and a lighter dose than Danessa's bomb contour which has a little more punch more pigment it has a soft matte finish this is supposed to be a uh, soft matte as well but I think this has more of a natural finish to it despite that. It has the Upsolite technology where there are like micro spheres in the formula there to pick up excess sweat and oil throughout the day. And I do feel comfortable applying this product now deep into summertime just to maintain the integrity of my skin in terms you know of oils breaking through exposed to more humid climate conditions it's gonna remain and it's gonna stay right where it is and although the dew wet balm is very tacky the fact that i can successfully apply powder products yes the melting powder formula not your typical powder product but it meshes so well with the dew wet balm it didn't interfere with its placement. It didn't look uneven, splotchy, or overly textured. It just enhanced the color. <laughs> it made it more golden coral peach. And when I added the uh, tangerine orange shade to this side, that definitely amplified that gradient. So hopefully this video helped. We looked at alternatives. We looked at more shades, more product combinations. Let me know, friend, what you've been trying out, how you have been experimenting experimenting, what you've been loving or may not loving because some of you had said in my last bomb video that it didn't work out for you and you shared your alternatives for products that did. So I think it's important to read both types of feedback because, you know, one product is not going to work for everyone despite how well it does. And I think it helpful just to share our experience, whether positive or negative, so we can just help each other out and know that there are other choices out there that can work out better for us in the end. I will see you down in the comments, fam. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, Skin Summer Extravaganza, monthly favorites or vlog. Take care and I will see you again soon.